fascination with the dark side. And um, it's fun to go to the movies and escape and, and really get deep into the whole fantastical characters. And um, I myself have always loved the dark side as well. So I think it's something that everyone secretly longs for and wants. And um, I myself have always loved the dark side as well. So I think it's something that everyone secretly longs for and wants. One of the ones that took it back to them. Mm. So what did they do? They bought Jay-Z off to tell the short version of the story. And each one of these individuals had to make a blood sacrifice. So let's take a closer look at this. Who did, uh, who did Damon Dash sacrifice? He sacrificed his fiance. Who was he engaged to at the time? Aaliyah. Ooh. Who died in a plane crash. Who did Suge Knight sacrifice? Tupac. Ooh. Who Irv Gotti was supposed to sacrifice, but it didn't happen? Ashanti. She broke away from the camp, and now she's doing well. But that was his blood sacrifice. Are you following me? Yes, sir. Teach. Yes, I'm still here, and I see you for who you are. And you're not far from the devil's face. So I pat my heart and run away. So run away. Yes, I'm. And um, I myself have always loved the dark side as well. So I think it's something that everyone secretly longs for and wants. Fantasy, you are not invited to the other side of sanity. They calling me as a liar. So hypnotizing. Could you be the devil? Could you be an angel? As a liar. So I swear I wanted to be like the Amy Grant of music, yeah. <laughs> but it didn't work out, and so I sold my soul to the devil. To be honest with you, they haven't heard I Kissed a Girl and I'm a little scared. Not gonna lie, but I love you, Mom and Dad, so much. Since we're talking about parents today, we've got some parents here. And uh, welcome, Keith and Mary, glad you're here. And we want you to... Uh, Get a chance to get to know them. Keith and Mary are, uh, they've been pastors. You guys have worked in ministry for many years. And uh, Katie was raised in a home where you guys were pastors and preaching. And, and so tell us, if you could, first of all, just tell us a little bit about what was Katie like as she was growing up. Well, Katie, um, at nine years old, she started singing in her bedroom. And uh, we noticed every time she would be going to bed, she'd be singing. And so uh, Mary and I, my wife and I, thought, well, you know, we better uh, sing because this must be a gift of God. And uh, we started uh, developing and sending her to uh, song uh, schools and uh, even a little opera there. You might hear her voice every once in a while. And, uh, and so uh, that's basically what happened when she was growing up. She started singing in church. We needed somebody to sing in church. We had a little church in Lake Havasu, Arizona. Does anybody know Lake Havasu, Arizona? Yeah. And um, so maybe you 
her up to that, and she starts singing, and she has a real worship voice, which we got her started. And so how old was she when she started singing in church? She was about nine or ten. Nine or ten, wow. Because was she playing then, playing guitar then, or just singing? She started out when she was about eleven. Isn't that something? Now, um, we've talked quite a bit about Katie, but um, I'd like for you guys to tell me. These, these guys about her as far as um, she was very young, she committed her life to Jesus. Is that right? Oh yeah, she's always been a true worshiper. She's always loved the Lord. She has Jesus tattooed on her wrist, but it was who she hung around that uh, caused her to stray away. But she's on a round trip ticket and she's on her way back. <laughs>
but they're worshiping the wrong one. How many know what I'm talking about? But the one thing that I believe that, that we should do is start praying for musicians, especially because there's many of them out there that have once uh, been in the church and followed the Lord and have fallen away from the grace of God, and we really need to lift up the musicians because they are reaching masses. Katie is reaching masses of people today, but in the wrong way. But we believe that she will come back and serve the Lord. Somebody say amen. 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 You know, when... uh, uh, let's uh, go to some other areas. You were raised Catholics. Uh, you were raised as a Catholic. What are your feelings toward the church and religion in general? Well, I struggle. I struggle with my feelings about the church in particular, but I guess it's quite honestly completely separate, isn't it? Religion and the church are two completely separate things. But uh, in terms of religion, uh, I'm very religious. I was raised Catholic. I believe in Jesus. I believe in God. I'm very spiritual. I pray very much. But at the same time, there is no one religion that doesn't hate or speak against or uh, be prejudiced against another racial group or religious group and uh or sexual group and for that i think religion is also bogus so i suppose you could say i'm a quite religious woman that is very confused about religion and i i dream of uh and envision a future where we have a more peaceful religion or a more peaceful world a more peaceful state of mind for the younger generation uh that's what i dream for do you believe you'll go somewhere when you pass on do I believe in heaven yeah. or hell? I guess I believe I'll go to heaven, but I'm, I suppose I could go either way, couldn't I? You mentioned earlier about this uh, appeal to the gays. You're an outspoken advocate of gay rights. Why do you think there's such an appeal between you and the gay community? You for them, they for you. Why? Well, um... I can speak for myself and that my admiration for the gay community comes from uh, an, um, an incredibly steadfast and uh, joyful courage and bravery.